Hey guys, MTG Noob here, bringing you round one of this Avison Restored Draft. Um, I think although we're on the draw, this hand's gotta go back. I mean, with one land, it does get very good, but the land we have is a Plains, and we would really only be able to play Bladed Bracers and potentially Pilgrim, and I don't think that's strong enough. So, I'll ship it, and although I have a Blessings, um, I have two guys I can play, so I will keep. And we'll draw we'll draw some cards. The only thing that uh, kind of sucks is that we have a Blessings in hand. That's a card I'd much rather draw later on in the game. Okay, so we draw another land, which is always nice. Uh, I'm going to play a Plains out because of the fact that I do have Banishing Stroke. Not that I'd want to miracle this, since it's just a 1-2 dork. Uh, protection from nothing in my deck, but you never know. I also can fake Righteous Blow, and there's there's nothing really in green that you could fake for one mana. So we take an Ouchie, and we pass, and here we go. Okay, so right now, currently, he can't block my Wandering Wolf, so I'm going to play out my Wandering Wolf. Now, he's currently white, so I have to be worried that he might have Righteous Blow. There was one I took, but there was also one I passed. So, that being the case, we'll see what this is. Okay, Lancer. Little bit hard to deal with. We're not going to be swinging with our Wandering Wolf since he now has some First Strike guys. Um, we will probably play the Nightshade Peddler. I don't know if we're really going to pair them. Having a 1-1 Death Touch that can't really block First Strike Eye and a 2-1 Wandering Wolf that can't really block anybody, eh, it's not so great. Okay, we're going to play out the Peddler here. We're going to be taking some damage, unfortunately. Um, but we'll still leave up our... Planes to fake a Righteous Blow. Um, we're probably going to be at 15 before you know it. As, <laughs> and if he has something that uh, swings in with haste as a 2-1, Fervent Cathar, uh, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. But we might have to actually block that. Okay, Mad Prophet, I might have to just trade with here if he decides to go aggro. Um, now I kind of see why possibly should have ended up yeah he's coming in pairing because then I could have probably just blocked with the nightshade peddler okay so he's not swing I don't know what he's doing I think I think he's deciding um, his first strike I'm, I'm not gonna double block a midnight midnight duelist I I think you swing with the midnight duelist there you could pot potentially get crazy with the uh, mad prophet and, and go all in as well Okay, so here comes another Wandering Wolf. Uh, at this point, I think I just play the Holy Justice R, and I don't necessarily want to pair these guys either. Um, after I did that, no, you know what, I might just pair them. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to pair them. Um, after I did that, what happened was I decided... Maybe I should have played the Wandering Wolf, then Blessings, making them two, four, threes, and he can't really block them. However, um, I can still tap something next turn and play the Wandering Wolf, then play the Blessings. So I kind of was a little short-sighted there, so hopefully you understand that. Um, you know, I'm trying to tighten up my play, so your comments really do help me when you comment, even if it's something that's like, MTG Noob, you suck. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it does and is helpful, so thank you. And uh, if you see anything here, you let me know as well. Okay, so he ditches a Thatcher's Revolt. He's going to be uh, getting some work with this Mad Prophet that I'm dragging all over the place. Uh, he ditches his land, and he draws a card. So he's up to three cards. We are up to three ourselves let's see what this gem is oh my goodness that is very bad for us <laughs> oh really <laughs> okay so 
Riders basically says you lose. Um, we kind of need a banishing stroke off the top. All of our guys are currently human except for the Wandering Wolf. And they have pro-human, so I really can't tap any of his guys down. Um, so we're going to be taking three here. His deck's actually pretty good outside of maybe this, but sometimes you need a 23rd playable. All right, we need Banishing Stroke big time. All right, we have a Joint Assault, which makes our wolf able to trade with this. Um, fortunately, all of his guys are, are human, so I believe the tap ability is not going to work itself out. Um, I can play a Blessings, go all in on this one wolf, um, and have a six power guy, but I think that's not going to be the case. However, let's, let's see. I think I'm going to attack with this wolf and, and see if he wants to just straight up trade here. I mean, it's going to cost me my Joint Assault. I really doubt he's going to block. My only thing that I potentially shouldn't have swung there was because he could have had Righteous Blow as one of his last cards. Um, I'm going to play out my other Wolf, and I'm most likely going to be blocking here and trading, which is kind of poopy, um, but it is what it is. I would have liked to not have been in that situation. Okay, we still are going to be able to trade if he slams us on here. Okay, I, I think that's very good. I think that's a good play by my opponent. You spread out your damage. Um, for those of you who are kind of new, a big mistake that I always made was that I would put my enchantment, like aura, or equipment on my biggest creature, and that would end up just getting chump blocked, and I would miss a point of damage here or there. Okay, so I can't tap down any of his guys, um, because they've got pro-human, this is a human ability. Uh, what I have to do here is just block the riders and trade. Okay, so got to do that. We're going to be taking 3, going to 10. I kind of feel like his attacks could be a little bit better. Um, but, you know, not much I can do about that. Getting the riders off the field is probably the best thing I could do there. Okay, now the next best thing would be to rip a banishment off the top. Okay, that really doesn't do much. However, he's got a first striker now, um, but I can tap it down. So I think I'm going to be doing that. Unfortunately, I'm a, a mana short. What I can be doing is just probably trading here and taking four um, and just going all in on this Wandering Wolf. He's on a three-turn clock. We're also kind of on a three-turn clock. My other play is just to tap down his guy. That doesn't really um, help us, per se, because of the fact that it doesn't develop our board. And if he has any removal spell or anything of that nature, it's going to be hard-pressed for us to get this victory. So I'm going to swing in here. He can't block it. He takes 6, he goes to 12, he's on a 2 turn clock. Okay, he's still going to loot, which is fine. Um, he chucks uh, planes, and oh my god, what a beating, man. Alright, well, now we really have a limited shot. I mean, you know, he knows what's in his deck, so nothing I could do about that. He just super 2 for one to me. Uh, my only hope here is that he messes up casting the miracle, <laughs> which uh, I myself have done quite frequently. Um, that's kind of a beating. I think his deck's actually pretty strong. At this point, we're going to just probably take minimum, I'd say, four. 
Uh, if we have to trade here, we'll trade here. We can still technically be in this, unless this is defy death on riders. Yeah, I, I, we just, we're at four. So, um, hmm, all right, well, he would have had that anyway, even if he didn't have the banishing stroke. So, we're going to have to go in and sideboard this game to play slightly around riders because we just it's it's been kicking our butt all game okay so we're at four and let's see what we draw uh pilgrim does not stop the damage i could swing in but it'll just get chumped in and we won't gain any life i'm not going to show him anything else good game to my opponent uh riders is very hard to deal with. I think our deck showed up as best as it could off of six cards. Um, Alright, so how do we deal with this? Goodness gracious. Do we have anything to deal with riders? I don't think we do outside of our own our own uh, <laughs> banish, banishing stroke. We are in the play <clears throat> this time around. I really don't see anything we want to board differently. I think I like where we're at with all of our cards. A lot of our guys get trumped, unfortunately, due to his first strike. But we'll uh, hopefully draw better this game. Okay, this seems very acceptable. I, I can't really argue with, with this hand. Uh, it's got a curve. It does what our deck is supposed to do. So that being the case, we'll... Uh, Try not to get blown out by riders, which this does because we have a human, a wolf, and a gloom widow, although the gloom widow does not do anything against his ground guys. Okay, so we do have the righteous blow this time. We're going to play the wandering wolf. Worst case scenario, he plays a 2-2. Uh, best case scenario, we get in for 2. Now, this blade of bracers is going to be kind of hard for us to deal with since it's going to buff past our Wandering Wolf's power. Um, next turn, if he does nothing, I just play out the Gloom Widow. And then we hold up Righteous Blow. Okay, so I think I might try to kill that and then just play out my own guy. Borderland Ranger is nice, but we don't need the, um, the land at the moment. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to swing in. We'll see if he wants to go for the trade. He might not, actually. He might just equip and have a, a big dude. Okay, so I feel that that was pretty smart of him. Um, we're going to just play out a 3-3 three, three here. It can't block. However, it does get aggressive. And we still have the Righteous Blow. So if he equips, he can't give it for a strike. He'll have a 3-3. Three, three. He could bash in for three. It'll be vigilant. Next turn. Yep. Okay, that's fine. He swings in. Next turn, we're probably going to once again try to trade off the wolf. This guy, he just craps on our deck. Why does he always got to crap on our deck? He might just trade with the uh, Gloom Widow, though. So we kind of... Don't really want a 2 for 1 ourselves just to get rid of this, but a 3 3 first striker is going to be hard for us to deal with, actually. Um, hmm. That kind of changes the equation a bunch. Alright, so we're going to play our land. That's, that's common sense. So now I have a few lines of play, and this is usually where I end up struggling in my magic development as a player where there is a, a line of play I, I think things through and I end up picking the wrong path like the road less traveled I always take the road that I think has traveled the most the safest bet and I end up screwing up all right right now I don't think he's trading with this um, he might just block this and then we righteous blow that's one path we end up losing our wolf and killing a guy that's okay. He's not the greatest in the world. Our next path is just swinging with the Gloom Widow. 
then playing out the Nightshade Peddler and the Inquisitor of our own and binding them, giving this, making this guy a 2-2 first strike death touch. Now, that's awesome, but it doesn't necessarily help block this because they're still going to trade on first strike damage. At least that's my line of thought. I could be wrong, so... Um, we kind of really want to get rid of this guy just because of the first strike. But is it worth getting rid of that guy for losing the Wandering Wolf in a Righteous Blow? Um, he might just end up trading with the Gloom Widow, but I don't foresee that. So I'm going to swing with both guys. If he wants to trade, that's fine. I just play the Borderland Ranger, and I snatch up a Plains. I, I think he might not even block here. If he does, he does. Uh, if he doesn't, he still takes five. He can't block here, so that's always a good thing. And if he doesn't block, okay. So he just chumps there, which is fine. Okay, so he chumps. I think he wants to just make sure this guy gets through and then can block this guy. All right, see, now that's the third line that I didn't see, that he would just chump. But do you see what I mean when I, when I talk about myself as a player? Like, I want to develop past this where I'm able to see everything, and I really needed to see all three angles there. And I didn't. I only saw two, and, you know, it, it wasn't a big deal. It didn't cost me my guy or anything like that, but I should have been able to see, hey, uh, I'm chumping here. And that's what I'm doing. Okay. So we went with the line after attackers that this guy and this guy are going to be paired. This guy now has Death Touch. The way we get screwed here is by him playing a Riders, which is potentially possible. Okay. I don't know why he's playing a scroll for three. Maybe he misclicked. Okay. He's playing a Kieran, Kieran Striker as well. Um, he's popping the scroll. Uh, not popping the scroll. Okay, if he swings in with this, I'm just going to block with this. Um, however, it might be better to just straight up trade there. Okay, so he decides not to. Uh, we hit a planes, which is fine. Um, now we're in the same spot again, which is... I think I swing with everybody. He can't first strike anything. He can potentially righteous blow. Uh, he'll probably trade here this time around and maybe here. Uh, and then he'll draw a card. He'll be up three cards and we'll end up with a 1-1 one, one death touch and a 2-2. Two, two, and he'll be at 13. Uh, I don't really know if I like that. But we do have a righteous blow. So we can kill the striker. So I think that's fine. Uh, also, if he trades here, that's fine. We keep open our mana. So if he wants to strike, I, th I think this attack is fine, kind of going all in here. We have to play around his own Righteous Blow, but I didn't see one first game. So that being the case, we want to keep open our mana and see how he decides to block. Remember, we also have quote-unquote Joint Assault. Okay, so he blocks there, he blocks there. Now I have a choice. Do I want to kill this? or kill this. Um, we're getting in for five. I think having this guy as a 2-2 two -two death touch is pretty strong. Losing the wolf is unfortunate. Um, getting in for five, getting him down to 16, we have a borderline ranger, and that's it. That's really our only play. And he's going to be up three cards. So we, we kind of have to save something. I feel like if I join to, uh, excuse me, Righteous below this guy, then I'm going to end up having a guy off the field that's it's pretty strong, and we still have 5 power, 7 power on board. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to kill this guy. Um, we're still going to have 5 power on board. We'll end up... Okay, he's going to crack the scroll. No joint assaults. This, uh, no uh, vanishing strokes this time. Okay, so these two trade, these two trade, we get in for five. And now we play a Borderland Ranger. 
and I guess we get a forest because of the fact that we still want to pretend we have joint assault mana and I don't want to really show him that our hand is only planes that would kinda of suck so that's another thing that you end up sometimes realizing like you play out the land and give them information that they shouldn't necessarily have okay so that's fine he'll probably just suit it up if he ends up playing a dude here that's really bad okay so he's got a 3-3 vigilant guy we really need to draw something pretty awesome um, that's not it the only thing I could really do in this scenario is swing team and team gets picked off he goes down to six and then he's gonna have two first strikers um, drawing nothing there was pretty pretty hard to deal with we can swing gloom widow I don't think he's gonna trade at eight uh, he'll just probably go down to eight then he'll have two guys that sit in the way I really don't like that but I don't think we're in a spot to just have one of my guys eaten and then he's got uh, first striking guy uh, we do have banishing strokes still in our deck we have a ways to grow our guys I think I can't call carelessly just throw things away at this point I think we're kinda in this for the long haul and the long haul is probably him playing a paired guy here and us trying to develop our board now I played out the land there I kinda didn't need to um, but we'll have six mana in case we have like a redeemer or something off the top and, and we still have mana to dump into this guy so I feel it's fine I mean he's he is wielding two axes okay he's gonna defy death his guy get back the striker um, and they'll both have first strike and you know there's not much I could do about that okay the fact that that's vigilant is pretty strong so we'll go down to 14 ourselves. He has one card in hand. Um, we're hoping to rip something awesome off the top. Okay. How do we win? Uh, I'm not going to... I'm going to just... Yeah, I'm going to try to miracle this. Um, so what do we want to do here? Do we want to have a six power first strike guy? Do we want to have a 5 power and a 3 power guy? How do we want to do this? This is a real question here. Um, the 6 power of the Gloom Widow is pretty good. And then this guy being a 3 3 first strike. And then this guy, he's got to potentially chump and then trade. Um, we can also spread it out differently. I don't really like going all in on the Gloom Widow, but we kind of can't go all in on... Maybe we want to go all in on the Inquisitor. I don't really feel like going all in is, is, is really good. The thing is, to put two here, he could just kill it. Two here, he goes down to two. Then he could just trade. All right, so we have to assume he has nothing. Okay, so we're going to pay one. And now we're going to cast the miracle. We're going to try to cast it. Um, if we put everything on the Gloom Widow, we're most likely getting him down to two this turn. He might just chump and then play something else. And, you know, he might end up having a bigger first strike guy. I think potentially putting it on the Inquisitor makes it so he's got to draw an out to the Inquisitor. Um, his out is like maybe a defang or a um, a Riders of Gavity, which would give his guys pro-human, which would be really bad. So I got to keep that in mind because then he could just chump block our guys all day and the first strike does nothing. So I think I might want to go all in on the spider here. But he does have Banishing Stroke in his deck. So this is really uh, quite the decision. 
Uh, let me know in the comment section what the correct play would have been. I feel like if I put three here, I've got a six power Gloom Winnow, and three here gives me a three three first striker. Um, and then I can swing in and potentially trade with this. And he can't double block and kill this, unless this last card really is Righteous Blow, which then nothing would happen anyway. Okay, so his clock's ticking. Okay, he's lost connection. So now we have a little bit more time to talk about this play. Um, if I spread out the counters 4-1-1, he still gets to 2, like 2-1-1. Two, one, one. He still gets to kill both of, you know, one of our guys, trade here. Um, you know, we want to spread out our damage the most, if that makes any sense. But his guys having first strike is, is pretty hard to deal with, and he might have banishing stroke. So we're waiting for our opponent. So at this point, what am I going to do? If I put everything on the Gloom Widow, I have a seven power creature. He goes to one. Uh, he potentially just chump blocks with the striker. And then he plays another guy and just chump blocks. Um, if we put everything on here, then we have a six power first strike guy. He, we're still in the same boat. But he ends up getting to, in a sense, you know, top deck riders of Gavany and then equip and have a 4-4. Four, four. So I'm trying to see what the best bet is. I think going all in on the Gloom Win Widow is not the greatest because of the fact that he does have ways to remove it. Um, and we would probably just get chump locked and then be at square one where we have a guy that can't get past this. However, if we spread it out 2-1-1 we have a bunch of power spread across. This could get double blocked, and then he takes seven. Um, however, if he double blocks the spider, then he's still cold. Uh, we're still cold to riders off the top. So we've got to keep things in mind. This is, this is challenging. And remember, this guy does not have first strike. Uh, we have to give him first strike. So we make this a four. Make this a four. We swing in. Hmm. I mean, let's see the way we could do the most damage. Make this guy a 6. <laughs> and then just get double double blocked and have a 6-6. Six, six. That's terrible. I mean, we can make 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Um, put a counter here, a counter here, a ca two counters here. And then he, if he double blocks, he dies. I think I like that. No, that would make a 4, 3, 4, which would not be good. Then he would just trade and probably chump, go to 4. My main concern is him double blocking and taking out one of my guys. Um, still says that he has lost connection, so... We'll still wait it out. As long as my clock's not going, we're uh, just rambling about the correct way to make this play. So, we put two here. He becomes a 4-4. Four, four. They put one here. He becomes a 3-3 three, three first strike. He trades. Put four here. He uh, One here. He becomes a 4-4. Four, four. If we put one, two, one... Then we have 4-4 four, four first striker, which seems pretty good. A 4-4 four, four gloom widow, and a 3-3. Three, three. The problem is, the 3-3s three, are just going to get eaten by this guy. But then he's forced to chump block. Hmm. 
interesting. <laughs> I wish like a little birdie came and was just like, dude, do this because you're being stupid right now. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny because I've had like six minutes to think about this play and I, I still don't know what the best play is. So definitely in the comment section, hook me up, let me know what you would have done. I think having this guy as a first striker is really um, important. Um, so let's see. I think we're going to put... We can't, I, we can't go all in on the Gloom Widow. I think we're going to put one here. Okay, so Gloom Widow gets one. That makes him a four. This guy gets two. And... So Gloom Widow gets one, becoming four power. This guy becomes three power and this guy becomes a four power um trades trades double blocks yeah, i think we're gonna do this okay so now we have a four four first striker a four four and a, a three three first striker a four four and a four four so we're going to swing, 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 and we'll see what he decides to do. Like I said, we spread out our power. This might just be trading, and then if he chumps, he still goes to four. Uh, if he double blocks one, he goes to one. Okay, so he double blocks that, goes to one. Uh, we won't be killing anything, but we'll be putting him to one. And now he'll be able to buy himself a turn, assuming we draw something off the top. Now the only problem with that is if he does have the Riders of Gavany, then we just screwed ourselves. Now I feel that there was a way better way to do that, and now we just ended up kind of, you know, a little bit uh, in a precarious situation. Because now he gets to play Armnance, and we get to just basically trade um, our 3-3 Woodland, uh, Moreland Inquisitor, if he puts it on here. So if he puts it on here, he's got a 5-5, five, five, but then we end up a 5-5 five, five flyer. Uh, I don't know why he's leaving that open. That is curious. Why wouldn't you equip, uh, cost four to equip? Okay, that's why. All right, so now he can't double block. Uh, I assume he's going to trade here and chump here. So that being the case, we'll play this on our 4-4, four, four, and we'll end up gaining four life. We have a ton of humans. Okay, so we got to swing with both because we don't want to straight up just lose the game here. <laughs> if we don't, and he just double blocks. I would assume he's trading there, yep. Blocking, yep. Chump mode. Give our guy first strike. Hold up joint assault. Somewhat relevant. Okay, and then... We have a 2-1 and a 4-4, four, four, and as long as two creatures don't come down here, we might just have the game. Okay, well, he's tapping mana. Okay, this, I don't believe, does anything. I'm not going to be chumping here. We'll be taking three gladly, since we're gaining life. Um, that's fine. And we will hopefully be able to swing in and win the game. Okay, so our deck showed up much better. That Blessings play was a little bit of a challenge. He has a ton of artifacts, so we got to keep that in mind because he has 
Angelic Armaments, which makes a lot of his guys good. Um, we're getting our butt kicked by his first strike guy. So we got to keep that in mind as well. It's possible he has two. Um, the fact that he has potential flyers makes me kind of want to bring in the Geist Trappers over the worm. Um, so this way we could deal with his, his flyers better. We also might want to bring in Rain, uh, Rain of Thorns. Um, it's not really going to do anything for enchantments, but it will smash his artifacts. I just kind of feel like it might be a little bit slow, though. So I'm going to leave it in the board. If we end up getting blown out by it, it, it kind of sucks for us. But I'm going to leave it in the board because I don't think we're going to be in a case where we get to land slash um, screw him. Okay, I can't. I mean, I am on the draw here. So I can potentially keep this. But if I never draw a green source, it's like I just did it to myself. This is one of those hands that you know is going to draw, draw, draw a green source as soon as you mulligan it. But like I said, I want to tighten up my play, and I don't think a lot of people would keep this hand. Um, you let me know what you would think in the comments section. So let's mull this. And this is actually decent. It's not insane, but the fact that we might have a 3-2 Wandering Wolf is, is pretty strong. Okay, so you have pro vampires, sir. That is cool by me. Okay, we have an angel, which is very awesome, but now we just want to draw mana, and one of them's got to be a white source to play angel win. Uh, that seems like a plan. I'm going to be taking whatever this is. Okay, he's aggroing the shit out of me now. <laughs> Midnight duelist, 2-3 beater. Seems good, bro. <laughs> that just... <laughs> that just sucks that we're gonna like potentially lose to double midnight duelist. I can't even block it at the moment. That's how sad <laughs> sometimes life is sad. And now this is one of those times. Especially if he first strikes one now. Psh, that's a problem. That's gonna be a three three first striker. I can't I gotta take this. I can't trade here. I mean that's Probably the worst trade on earth. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to play Banishing Stroke here. Uh oh. Oh, I did this before, guys. All right, there we go. Okay, and then we're we're going to race. We definitely need to draw some land though. Okay, so we banishing stroke that. Um that might have been a little bit greedy there, but I think him having a 3-3 three, three vigilant first striker potentially is is kind of hard for us to deal with. Okay, that might be a Demolish. Okay. That is a fine sideboard card. However, currently he's at one card. I'm not going to lie and say I'm not worried. But we drew a white source. We should be okay. Okay, that is not a white source. Alright, getting a little bit worried here. Demolish was a fine card there. Look at him, he's got his own Reign of Thorns going on. Alright, so the Malda 6 plus Demolish is actually pretty good. Um, he's probably going to suit one up. Or play a toughness thing that doesn't matter. Because what matters is power. So right now we're currently ahead in this race. If we hit a white source, we're like insane golden. Uh, that's good. None of these things are white sources, but now with Avenger, I'll probably be taking any, uh, any color mana. 
And we got to hold up our joint assault to just protect this guy. All right, so he's going to equip. We're winning this race currently. Although a 2-5 Vigilance is pretty good. Luckily, we have this Bladed Bracers. Okay, we'll go to... Uh, that's not a white source. I still got to hold up my Joint Assault. Just in case. He'll go to 8. So we got to hit him once more and hope he didn't rip something here. Okay, that still doesn't matter. However, it's going to matter now when he equips. So that definitely is going to suck. But we'll still be able to kill that. Um, he's going to get us down to 7. I don't know why he didn't swing with the other guy. Okay, like I said, that first strike guy, he's a problem. Okay, so we take, and then I assume he's just going to equip here, have a 3-5 first strike. We're going to pump our guy to a 5, and maybe we'll rip a Blessings off the top and just be a pro like that. Come on, Blessings. Or another Wandering Wolf. Okay, so... <sighs> the best line of play is we're going to... If we swing in here, he blocks, we kill this. I, I don't see how we don't do that. Um, our guy goes to 5-4, he has a 3-5, and that buys us a bunch of turns. So if he doesn't block, then I have to just play out the Wandering Wolf number 2. I assume he's just going to block here. I, I, I can't see how he doesn't. He probably assumes that I didn't realize that um, his guy can block there or, or some something of that nature. But we're, we are giving him another draw step, and we are on our own clock. So the fact that we have not been able to draw out of this land rut is a little bit challenging, being that it is now turn... Seven. Okay, so he takes the three, and now as long as he does not top deck something awesome, we should win the game because I'm going to make my wolf have five power. So, as long as you didn't top deck anything. Okay, so he's swinging for team. The only way we lose is to a thunderous wrath um so i'm gonna just block here and we'll probably lose this guy but potentially we have some damage taking and we're still safe to a thunderous wrath so here's our play if Yes, Thunderous Wrath, we lose. If not, we're good. I'm going to fast F6. And that resolves. And we'll see if he's got the Wrath. Uh, we still have a turn if he doesn't have the Wrath. But if he does, we just are pooped. I don't know if there's any white fog. All right, so that was round one. As always, thanks for watching. Please check out my other videos. Check out the awesome contests going on on our homepage. Uh, and most importantly, help me out, get better, comment, and everything. And please subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching.